Welcome to Tech Business with Dhamero. In this video, we are going to talk about billing and how you will uh, analyze your bill and take a look. And then we will be also talking about pricing calculator in Azure. And uh, then we are going to uh, estimate for some of the resources uh, that we are planning to use uh, in future. So first of all, uh, you will log in to your subscription. And once you log in, you're going to see subs uh, subscription right here. Click on subscription and uh, then uh, uh, Sorry, go to the Azure subscription here. And now on the left side, you're gonna see right here, cost analysis. Once you click on the cost analysis, a, a very beautiful and detailed charts and tabular page will upload it. So here uh, you can see that that's where your subscri subscription is. And uh, now if you have multiple subscription, you're gonna see right there and then you can uh, click on one of them uh, that you would like to analyze uh, and uh, go from there. Now in the views, uh, there are already set to views. Uh, so there are accumulated cost, cost by resource, daily cost, cost by service and uh, invoice detail. So let's uh, take, uh, we, uh, take a look on accumulated cost right now. And here is my actual cost and here is my forecast. So uh, that's uh, for, uh, um, I believe this is for just uh, for one month, you know, that's uh, what it is. And uh, you can see right here, uh, service name. So you can see that Azure Data Factory, uh, Virtual Network, uh, SQL Database and all that. So this is uh, this chart is according to the service name. Then another chart is there that's according to location. So it's ES, EST, US EST. Then there is another one called the resource group name. So all these charts, what you are seeing here, they have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, filters and you can select any so let's say if I would like to go and say meter and then it's gonna be dividing according to the meter so you can spend hours and hours uh, to analyze your data on these uh, pages so you see right here it says the D8 V3 license and uh, that's uh, uh, my data factory this is a private endpoint I created this is a uh, uh, other information self hosted and uh, all so let's go to location here and the same type of filters are available here and uh, you can uh, change to maybe uh, let me see if I will say resource or something like that so I can see for the details here so this this can be uh, you can kind of set to uh, your choice and uh, they will be saved and the next time when you log in you're gonna see right there okay uh, right, as I was uh, telling you guys, if uh, the, the, this is a lot of information and uh, um, you can spend hours and hours uh, on analyzing this. Uh, so uh, go through this. Uh, this is very actually detailed and it helps uh, uh, if uh, you are using some features uh, such as uh, like maybe data factory endpoints or many services, uh, uh, whatever you are using here and uh, you can see how much you are paying and uh, if you want to maybe a change about it so maybe you have sql server three sql server created there is some uh, database sitting there and you are not using it anymore and you might feel like oh i can merge a couple of them and then only use one database and all that i don't need to do other ones and i'm just paying extra money for that so there could be tons of scenarios that can help you now let's go to the another tab cost by resource so you already have seen that in the charts, uh, where the pie charts you are seeing right there, like it is, uh, or or donut charts you are seeing those are details there. Here is the tabular form of that. So if I go here, Azure Data Factory, um, and you can see right there, D eight V three license included. So I am um, paying uh, in month of August. So let me go actually back to the last month because. Uh, I have a whole lot more details for month of July because I was using different resources to create my demos. In the month of August, I have deleted actually a lot of resources because I don't need them anymore. So here you see that SQL Server and that I paid $98 right here. And uh, it says SQL database and uh, then further go right there, SQL database uh, data stored. So uh, that, that's uh, one of the resource I use. Then I use the Azure Data Factory. Then I created the manage instance. So I created the manage instance and I paid the $8.06. Uh, so think about that. Uh, when I created this uh, SQL manage instance, it took me five hours to create that. So there was no time. Uh, or billing uh, charge to me for the time of creation of that resource. The charges were only uh, done once your resource is uh, uh, online and uh, that's where it started. So it charged me 
um, for probably a day or two. Uh, I believe it is, it, actually it was less than a day because once I created the managing instance, after that I performed the demo and then I, I dropped it. So you have then uh, another SQL server and all that and here you have uh, uh, VMs. So I created uh, VMs for uh, different uh, testing and uh, there were uh, for ju just this uh, Amir VM, I paid $1.43. So this is a very detailed level analysis of your resources, how much you are built. Let's go to the next one, daily cost. This is very important actually, and this is very helpful because you can use filters here and I'm going to use, let's say, last 30 days good for now. So let me show you right here. So you can see July 10 and then all the way. And here you see August 1st, 2nd and 3rd, I was paying more money right there. So uh, I can do further and I'll say like, oh, which resources I created uh, that I am paying more money and if uh, I can shut down and I don't need them, so why I'm paying more money. So this is also um, important in case of like maybe sometime you know, your uh, uh, Azure Data Factory pipelines are running uh, and they're taking a whole lot of time and you might want to think like, oh, my pipelines were running fine in the last month and now they're taking more time. So you maybe do some performance tuning, you know, maybe want to do some uh, uh, sequential runs instead of uh, doing parallel runs for your data flow tasks and all that. So you, you with uh, looking at the daily charts, it help, and then you can further dig into it, uh, which resources taking more money and why, and then uh, maybe you can analyze uh, and if you don't need it, maybe you can shut it down or uh, maybe do some performance tuning uh, and uh, you know, uh, that will help in your uh, monthly and yearly bill. Okay, so here is the cost by service uh, and uh, you see right there, and there are very different type of charts so, so you see right there, group by service name, you can uh, choose whatever you want, meter ID, location, invoice, frequency and all that. Then you have monthly you or you can do daily and then uh, you can uh, have very different type of charts. So, so you have uh, area chart, line chart, columns, stack, column group and table. So you can uh, select any of that and uh, it will uh, be very helpful for analysis. So you see this is line chart and then uh, if I go back here. In the column chart, so see right there, this is all column chart. And uh, then uh, I also have, can add uh, further uh, filters. So it's my choice, uh, whatever the filters I would like to add. Maybe I want to just do for, I have like five locations. Then uh, I can choose those uh, locations. In my case, I have only uh, East US. Well, in the old, probably last month, I had a couple of them. So I can, uh, you know, take a look on those. So see right there. So now it is. Uh, by location and all that. So you can do further analysis. Uh, maybe in the tabular form, it will be better for you to take a look. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, so you see right there. So you have service name right here, you have cost, and uh, you can bring them close. And uh, see, you, that's a lot of flexibility. And uh, there are, uh, you have uh, these, uh, you know, reset columns and auto uh, sizes column and all those kind of things right there, you know. So there are tons of things and if you want to just uh, maybe SQL database. So if you want to filter right there only for service, you can have these filters that will help you to kind of get the data that you want. So it will be helpful for the filter. You can do all that. Now the last one is the invoice detail and that's uh, you're going to see all the details. So right here, that's a V course, your uh, service family name, charge type, and this and that. And then that's it there. At the end, you have the cost. So I'm paying the most of the money for SQL databases that I use for V core. And then I'm uh, next one is the my Azure Data Factory. And then I have managed instance. So then I have VNets and all that. So virtual networks, endpoints, and all that. So I'm paying some money for those. Okay. So this. Uh, uh, tells you a lot of detail and on top of that you have save save as uh, share refresh and uh, do download you this is a, one of the interesting part because uh, you would like to download this uh, uh, building information in CSV or Excel and send to somebody because uh, not everybody in your company is going to have uh, access to these uh, portal and uh, you uh, to send uh, this information to some, uh, let's say uh, somebody is working on Azure Data Factory, they don't have a uh, permission on the billing and all that. So you wanna just send them, hey, how much uh, Azure Data Factory is using uh, and uh, uh, why it was using uh, less money last month and now it is using more, what type of uh, pipelines you are running or what type of uh, um, uh, activities you are running and uh, if you need to do, do, do some performance tuning on those. 
Also, you can divide and uh, just get the data factory information and send to somebody and maybe it's for the same for SQL and all that. So you can send it to different teams uh, uh, depending upon your needs. So uh, you, these are all uh, like a tripe review. Uh, you can go further into that and see how it works. Uh, um, but uh, these are the most important things I was telling you, like your subscription, your view, then uh, you have a date. So you have tons of filter here. Also, you have a custom date range. And then uh, you have uh, you can keep adding the filters uh, according to the need uh, of the, or the reports you would like to create for your dashboard or to give to these uh, different team members. Uh, now, as we did this, uh, what we need to do uh, uh, even before even re uh, start using a resource, uh, you can go to the pricing calculator. So um, Azure dot Microsoft.com pricing calculator you see right there and uh, take a look on the pricing. So in my case, if I'm interested to use Data Factory. And uh, what I can do, I can click uh, right here, and it's going to bring me this calculator. Now, in the calculator, there are a lot more detail. So you see that in which region you would like to create your data factory, and what type of uh, data factory version you would like to use, and service type. So there are two of them. In our case, it's data pipelines. Now, here you have uh, all those detail options, what type of activities and all those you, you're going to use and uh, then uh, you're going to choose that. So let's say uh, Azure VNet, if I am uh, using uh, Azure Manage VNet uh, within uh, private endpoints uh, and uh, my pipelines are going to run for 60 minutes every day. So you can think uh, like, oh, I will be paying $60, you know, for that. So it says per hour, right? And then uh, now I think uh, like, oh, uh, I believe actually this is a per month so I'm thinking uh, like a 60 so in my case it will be uh, let's say 1800 right 1800 minutes so I will be paying 1800 dollars uh, if I will uh, run my pipeline across the month for 1800 minutes uh, uh, by using a private endpoint so with the manage vnet integration runtime right now if i want to go ahead and say i want to use a self hosted ir and my execution is going to be like uh, maybe 300 minutes you know in across a month so i will be paying total 30 dollar for that and then you have a, a external pipeline activity execution uh, pipeline activity execution hours and all that so these many let's say it is going to be 300 hours as well so your monthly cost will be $1,830, okay? Now, if uh, you are uh, uh, further wanna go in the, uh, let's say you, this was your uh, data flow task, right? Now, if uh, you are you gonna use the eight cores and uh, because every, every time you uh, run the data flow, it is going to use uh, uh, Databricks uh, Spark cluster. So it's gonna create that cluster. Now, once uh, you create that cluster, uh, what's gonna happen? Uh, uh, it is going to use uh, these many cores, all right? Now, in that case, you will be charged for that. Now, if I am just going for one instance and the total usage is uh, 730 hours uh, across the month, uh, and uh, then how much I'm going to pay? I'm going to pay $1,122, okay? So uh, you have to kind of, you can go ahead and detail and estimate it, but honestly, like there are uh, certain things you will not be estimated. There will be like a, kind of a miscellaneous and very detailed level uh, billing that you might not see everything here, you know. So uh, it's not going to be 100% like exactly like, oh, I, I use data flow. You might use the copy activity. You might use the different uh, uh, other activities and uh, you might be build a little bit here and there. But uh, this can give you good start uh, to take a look like how much my, your monthly cost is going to be. Now, if uh, I would like to use a SQL server and uh, SQL server, uh, I, I will say Azure SQL server, SQL database. Okay, Azure SQL database I would like to use. And if uh, I'm gonna be using in ECUS and uh, here, sorry, that's uh, our data factory, that's our database. So ECUS, single database, uh, okay, backup st uh, storage tire. Uh, I don't care about these like uh, different uh, things, the uh, vCore or DTU. So if you are using vCores, you're gonna pay probably a little more money and then you can depend on like number of vCores and all that and uh, you're paying uh, almost $380, right? And uh, instances one, these many 730 hours uh, pay as you go, so you can uh, do all more details here. Your If your storage is gonna be 200 GB, so you can see right there, and it will add up uh, to $391, okay? So point in time restore, if you need to do some time and all that, so how many GB is the 200 GB, right? 
So that's what it is, average data size during retention. So you have a lot of more uh, kind of filters here that you can use, and then it will tell you monthly charges. So if I will just go with the DTU, and uh, my it's a basic, uh, you know, not even uh, with the basic, so it's a uh, $4.90, but uh, your uh, total uh, size of database, you know, uh, you have a whole lot of kind of filters here that you can implement but I don't know if you will be using this type of database with the small uh, you know size and everything but I use this for all the time for my testing and then I, I just uh, drop it you know once I don't need it so the what you're gonna do uh, this is uh, your estimator that really helps and there are some example scenarios so let's go to example scenarios here and uh, you can see right here uh, this is the example scenario they have created like these are the products somebody need and uh, then uh, you can add to the estimator and this is loading and now you can see further right there like how much will be your monthly so 5500 uh, Azure analysis services power bi story account azure cosmos uh, db so then you can f go further see like what features or how much uh, 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 other features that you have added in this one so you can kind of make a small change and take a look on the a monthly estimator. So this was one kind of example scenario. Then you go to the saved and uh, these are the one we just uh, was working and uh, you can, uh, uh, let's keep saving it in your account and and when you decided to do it, I mean, you can always go and, uh, you know, build those resources. So uh, it helps when you come back and you want to do some analysis like, oh, I was estimating on this one and that one and that this is my all. Uh, per decks, uh, I was uh, uh, using it. Okay, so I hope uh, this uh, video will help uh, to go over your uh, billing information and uh, taking a look on the detail level and resource by category, by meter, by regions and all that. And uh, also the pricing calculator help uh, to estimate for the future. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.